मेरा नाम है अन्या आई स्पोकन चाइनीज एवर सिंस यू वन बट आई स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग हिंदी अलॉट मोर ऑफ्टन लर्निंग माई मदर टंग इज इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज वेन आई गो टू इंडिया एंड मीट माई ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स और अदर फैमिली मेम्बर्स इट्स ईजियर टू कम्युनिकेट विद दैम I um go there um most December's just about every and I really like going there cuz I get to spend time with my family I like I get to buy new clothes and eat all the great food there I think when I grow up a little more I'm going to start learning more and I'll still um keep on with the Hindi the most fun thing is that I get to communicate with people better and um I get to um be part of all these um special yeah. festivals and all the different beliefs and um cultures and people yeah i look at it as though it's a really colorful lens to go through life i came to learn french when i was 9 and my parents decided to get us to learn french we were living in port hedland of all places and not a lot of french speakers up there but we did have a native speaker teacher and the idea was to prepare us before we moved to canada for a year i remember in year 7 when we graduated from high from primary school all the students wanted to become marine biologists every single word so we walked across the stage and the teachers congratulated everyone and said she wants to become a marine biologist he wants to become a marine biologist and i was the only one that said i'd like to grow up and speak french fluently and then when my sisters and i and family arrived in canada we had to learn french four times a week with the students in class and so it was sort of sink or swim and that was it and that started a definitely a love affair of language learning for me it just opened up my mind to so many different possibilities and i think it has just changed the course of my life being able to speak another language just had the most amazing experience living away from perth for a year and it was hard it wasn't um all roses it was really difficult but i remember distinctly the moment when i left my residence and didn't take my dictionary with me in my backpack and i thought i've got this even though i might not know the words the correct words to use i know i've got enough language that i'll be able to get myself in and out of situations and i'll be able to explain what i need so that was really neat. When we know that the most important time for students is during that critical period between 3 and 7 years of age, 3 and 10 to learn a language and so that's why we're targeting students at that age. We just see students blossom when they get to express themselves in a language that means so much to them and is so closely tied with culture and what they know and how they've been brought up. I just want to scream it from the rooftops. I just want to make sure that students get the opportunity to learn languages because it opens so many doors. Make sure that the motivation comes from within. What's your personal motivation to learn that target language? At UWA, I study a Bachelor of Arts in um I'm majoring in linguistics and French studies and I'm also taking Spanish and Italian on the side. I started off uni studying psychology because I thought I wanted to become a psychologist. I wanted to help, you know, people. I wanted to focus on mental health. But then I took French as an elective year as a fun unit. And I absolutely loved it. It really it literally changed my life. Someone asked me how many languages do you speak? I have to say 7, but with different degrees of fluency. Each language has a has its own personality. Um I feel like when I curse, I like to curse in Javanese because it just feels I don't know it's like embedded in me. Again like when when I speak French with the French community or with my French teacher, it's just a different feeling. It's just a different different experience. I feel I don't know, sophisticated. I feel <laughs> I feel I don't know, artistic. And when I speak Spanish, I feel sexy. And when I speak Italian, I feel so happy and so romantic. I don't know. I feel like I'm somewhere in Italy in Sicily or something. Pick a language that you like. Pick a language that 
you're interested in that makes you happy. Being able to speak different languages means that you have more opportunities to study abroad, to work in different countries, not necessarily just in English-speaking countries. But for example, I can work in Indonesia, I can work in China, I can work in France, Italy, Spain. That just opens up the door for me. The second part of it, business. You, you can do business with different people from different countries. They can trust you more because they understand that, oh, this person speaks my language. They're interested in me. And I think that's important. I was in refugee camp in Kenya for 14 years. So when I came to Kenya, I only speak one language, which is Somali. So I had some problems, then I went to the police station, whatever it was. So I couldn't speak Somali, so I was there for a whole day. From morning to the evening, I couldn't say what I came for. I was just crying. So and what I wanted was just simple thing, two questions and two answers, that's it. So when my problem finished, I went home and I said, no, I need to learn Swahili. And then I started learning English and then I learned language. English takes me long, I'm still learning. When I moved to Kakuma, I was settled in the Sudanese community. Then I started learning Arabic. Then I learned Arabic and I can speak perfectly in Sudanese Arabic as well today. And sometimes I pretend, I say, I'm from Sudan. When I meet new Sudanese people, I say, I'm Sudanese. And then they say, oh, really, you look like, but you're Muslim. I say, yeah, I'm from Nuba area. So, but in the end, I say, no, 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 no. I just know the language. I'm not Sudanese. If you lose your language, then you lose your culture, because language and cultures are together. My kids who are born here, they, two of them can speak Somali. And I think every parent be proud of their kids when they speak their language, or when you talk to your children, they understand what you say. My younger one, who is nine years old, she can even read Somali. So sometimes words I can't read, I say, Sansom, can you read this? I want them to be part of my community and part of my culture and part of whole the nation of Somali. And I think language is important for the whole world. It's not just for one family or one person. I work at Peter Boys Anglican Community School. I teach Indonesian. I have had an experience growing up in Indonesia and I, I often say that I kind of took that for granted at the time and it was only when I returned to Australia with my family that I started to understand how valuable an experience that was and I wanted to explore that and so I studied the language at a university level and, and started teaching it. The buzz for me is the aha moments in students when they understand even just a concept, but the real joy in teaching a language is when students demonstrate an awareness of their, their place in this world and, and they understand other people a lot better and they demonstrate that empathy and awareness of others. My daughter, um, I spoke only Indonesian to her for the first three years of her life. Yeah, I don't, I don't regret at all doing that and I want to foster that again in the future. I really wanted my own children to be able to speak more than one language because I wanted them to have that asset to understand that there are so many different pathways, there are so many different opportunities and to be confined to one language and one perspective. I didn't want that for my own children and I wanted them to, especially to have empathy and understanding for other perspectives. All languages are special because they all have their own gifts. Ngalamboja, Aya, hello, this is our home, this is our country. I am an Aboriginal person, born here in Australia, on the dirt, near bushfire, and love going back to visit that beautiful spot. The languages I speak is a little bit of Nyunga, which is my native tongue. Nyunga, I'm a Wajiri person, and the mixture of Ngaju language and, and Wajiri language, which is part of the Nunga nation. Language is extremely important to our nation as Aboriginal people, no matter where we come from. 
language. Even though English is the first language at school, it is important still to speak that native tongue, whether it be Aboriginal English, whether it be Creole, whether it be their own languages. Um, they need that uh, liaison or those Aboriginal peoples in the school and teaching as that little one is developing into their skills in society as far as schooling is concerned because school is where it all begins. I used to uh, do this work by myself um, when the desert people used to come down. They had no one to turn to so there's the people in the community used to ring up to me and say could you go to the hospital such and such as in hospital and they got nobody there and they were literally crying up in their community, really sad. The language, it shapes the Aboriginal being to who and where they come from, whether it be of the land or whether it be in the cities. When you speak language, it's, it's gold. It has always been embedded in us. Um, it's just the, nowadays, it's beginning to be revealed again. And that makes me so proud because at last, the recognition is there for our native tongue, no matter where we come from within Australia, north, south, east, or west. I come from Burma, I am current tribe. I've been in Australia for 20 years, and I speak three languages. When I came to Australia, it was very hard for me. I can't speak English, and I can't read well. It's really hard, really hard um, working in the environment that I'm not used to with, dealing with the people. Some are very nice, some are not really. So it's, it's very hard. So there's a lot of current family come here with no education at all, and then they can't even write and read their own languages. So I start teaching my children in English, which I'm not even able to speak well. And because I'm worried that if, I'm, if my children go to school, they won't be able to communicate with other kids and they will be um, you know, bullied by the other kids. And then after that, I realized that I should teach my, my children my own language. Because when I meet my own children, you know, my children cannot communicate with them because they cannot speak English and they, they cannot speak our own tongue. That's what happened to my children. I think my, my language is already gone, I don't need it anymore. But it's not true, you know. I need it. When, if, I, if I know my language well, whenever I go, I can still help my own people. And then I believe that every tribe, every nation, they should encourage their children to be proud of who they are and then not to embarrass and not to be ashamed of who they are and what they can say and they should contribute to the community, to the other community, their own culture, their own language and they should be proud. Even they've been told oh, what you are and to, be, to go back to their country, forget about them and be proud of who they are and to contribute their language and their culture. That's all I want to say. It's a doorway right into the soul of a, of a culture and of a community. I work as Languages Consultant at the Association of Independent Schools and I'm also President of the Modern Language Teachers Association. So my background is, uh, is German and Dutch. My father is German and my mother is Dutch. I'm also fluent in Indonesian. I lived in Indonesia for several years. Most recently I've been learning Noongar, which I think is a really, it's, it's really allowed me to um, think about my place in Western Australia living on Noongar country. And I just love the way that you can use the language to connect with people. Our association supports language teachers. We provide professional learning, information and networking opportunities for the second language teaching profession. When you implement a languages program, do it well. Employ a qualified languages teacher. Uh, provide ample time on the timetable for children to learn the language and, and to learn it deeply. Um, in some countries, 
uh, four or five hours a week is the norm for learning a second language. When you learn a language, it's like a doorway into, really into the culture and it allows you to interact with people of that culture and make those connections in the world. But more importantly, when you learn a second language, it allows you to reflect on the mechanics of your first language. So you develop language awareness and literacy development. Every child has the right to access second language learning.